Megan will leave you here with Ronda Rousey, who fights in Strike Force in what, almost a week? Yeah, six days. Julia Butt, correct? Yeah, you're right. How are you preparing for her? Now, I know she's got three pro fights as well as you. So, is it hard to prepare for somebody who you can't watch a ton of film on? Well, I can watch way more footage of her than she can of me. So, I feel like I could be more prepared in that department. Now, you are becoming the face of women's MMA very quickly. You just made your pro debut this year in 2010, and you know, our, well, last year in 2010, and already people are saying, you know, you are now the person to look at for women's MMA. How does that make you feel? I feel like um, women's MMA does need a lot more, you know, not so much to say faces all the time, but they need more, you know, people that people recognize. And um, I feel like I'm probably the most capable of filling that role. I've been in two Olympics. I know what it's like to, you know, represent myself in very well under a lot of pressure. And um, uh, I don't, I don't feel that nervous about it. I feel like I, I'm ready, and I someone needs to do it. Talk to me about that transition from being an Olympian um, and now moving over to MMA. How did you make the decision, okay, this is something I want to do and this is something I want to follow? Um, it was more kind of like a process of elimination. I, I knew that uh, judo wasn't for me anymore, and I was like bartending and like doing the normal person thing for a year, and then I knew I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. And um, <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so then I was entertaining the idea of becoming either a rescue swimmer for the Coast Guard or um, becoming an MMA fighter. And since um, the Coast Guard would be like a commitment that I couldn't turn back from, I decided to give MMA a try first. So uh, it's going all right so far. Yeah, I would say so. I've got to tell you, you have on the cutest shoes right now. And for your last fight, you came out in these boots. And it was amazing to see that a girl can still be beautiful and be able to hold their own in the cage. Is that what you're really going for? Um, I actually wear the boots when I walk out because like when I fight like the blood stops going to my toes So people think like I stomp my feet to be scary and I wear boots to be cute But it's actually to keep my toes warm. Oh, all right. See that's good to know. Yeah. But anyway, it's there's fashionable yeah, it no, Doesn't hurt it's two birds with one stone. I like I like the boots. I love those now How do you feel when people you know when people think of female fighters? It's kind of like oh, they're never cuter. They're never prettier. There's a very select few Do you feel like you are able to now change this for young girls who might be growing up saying this is what I want to do but I I want to also be considered feminine yeah well you know what uh, Gina Carano kind of did that for me I never would have thought that uh, MMA would have you know offered a re like a real career for me if it wasn't for her you know doing it first and becoming so successful and um, the other girls like Misha Tate you know she's obviously very cute and the champion at uh, 135 and I think uh, I, I can also help out and you know you don't have to be you don't have to be ugly to be a feminist you know I, I really want to push that you know women can be strong and they can be for you know having equal rights and they can be sexy at the same time you know you don't have to choose one or the other now we hear Bert screaming backstage but you mentioned Misha Tate would you ever do maybe a catchweight fight with her she's at 35 you're at 45 maybe fight at 140 um, I don't think I would have to do catch weight. You know, I've been walking around five pounds over, you know, 145 for the past couple of weeks with, you know, eating whatever I want. So I think probably after this fight, I'm thinking of winning the 135 belt first and then going up and taking the 145 belt. And then if we have the two divisions unified, then we can probably maybe push everyone into one division and we can have the depth that uh, Dana keeps saying that we don't have and we can push for having women's MMA in the UFC. Wow, people would really, really love to see that fight because already on Twitter we see a lot of mentions on that. So that would be incredible if you get to move to 35. Now we're here at UFC on Fox, the very first show, main event. What's your prediction? Um, I want I want Cain Velasquez to win because I'll say it bluntly because he's a Mexican American and um, you know we already have the Brazilian demographic nailed. You know and. Um, my sister is actually a sports writer, and she just wrote a long, an article about how NASCAR has been struggling for a long time to get, you know, more um, more Mexican drivers and stuff like that. So because there's so many Mexicans in America, it's such a huge like demographic. There's there's Pacquiao and Marquez, you know, fighting this weekend. You know, to compete with boxing, we have to kind of like pull a lot of people away from that. And I I don't think that. Um, having UFC becoming, you know, a predominantly a white male sport is going to be helpful at all. So I'm going for Kane just because I think that um, diversity is what we need in the sport. We need to go for women fans. We need to go for Mexican fans, for American fans, for Brazilian fans, for Japanese fans. And I think that uh, Kane winning is part of helping that. All right. Well, good luck on Saturday. We can't wait to watch you. Actually, Friday, right? Strike Force Challengers is on Friday on Showtime. Don't forget to tune in.